bond, ionic bond, taken, not shared. That's right, today we're talking about bond types. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Keminacha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up nerds? So today we're going to talk about the three bond types. Yeah, there's only three, ionic, covalent, and metallic. So let's get started. Bond types, a lesson from the bonding unit. Chemical bonding basics. What is a bond? It's an attractive force holding atoms together. The simultaneous attraction of electrons to two or more nuclei. A form of potential energy. If we take a look at the picture, we see that there are two electrons in the bond and they're both being held by the two nuclei present. How does a bond form? Atoms lose, gain, or share electrons. If you recall from the periodic table unit, we talked about metals tending to lose electrons and non-metals tending to gain electrons. So bonds are formed from these tendencies of these different elements. Atoms obtain a full valent shell of electrons. That would be a noble gas electron configuration. Atoms go to a lower potential energy and atoms become stable. So if you take a look at our diagram here, we have potential energy on the y-axis and we have internuclear distance on the x-axis. Now internuclear distance is just the distance between two nuclei. So the way we follow this particular graph is to go from right back to left. So if you take a look at the right side of this graph, we have two hydrogen atoms. Now they're not bonded yet, and there's a specific amount of potential energy, as that flat line shows, of those two atoms. Now as those atoms come closer together, they're allowed to bond. When they do, they become more stable. They have a lower potential energy to that minimum point there at the bottom as we proceed from right back to that left point. So how does energy change? When a bond forms, energy is released, which means potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. When a bond breaks, energy is absorbed, which means kinetic is converted into potential. Let's say we had two atoms. The two atoms are up at a high energy. They're unstable. We bring them together in a bond at a low energy. You heard that clap? That signifies that energy has been released. Now that I've made my bond at a low energy, let's go the other way. Now I want to break my bond. My hands are stuck together, right? So I got to add energy <sighs> to put them back up at a higher energy. That's showing energy being absorbed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't work for you, we have an acronym that's pretty easy to remember, BARF. Broken, absorbed, released, formed. So when bonds are broken, energy is absorbed. When bonds are formed, energy is released. Let's talk about the three types of bonds. Let's begin with ionic bonds. They are between metals and nonmetals. Electrons are transferred, and the resulting positive ions, called cations, attract to the negative ions, called anions, forming the bond. So let's say we have sodium, a metal, and chlorine, a nonmetal. So metals tend to lose electrons and nonmetals tend to gain them. So this is like a match made in heaven. So if sodium has its one valence electron that it loses to chlorine, which has seven valence electrons, so it really wants to gain that one to get eight, we end up forming two ions. Sodium gladly gives its electron to chlorine. So on the right side of this diagram, we see that sodium has become an ion, a cation, a positive ion. And the chloride ion is now negative with its one extra electron, and both have eight in their outer shell to have a noble gas configuration. So now the sodium has a positive charge and the chloride has a negative charge. They're both opposites, so therefore they attract. So another way of looking at it is two siblings here, the two atoms. There's a toy that the one sibling just does not want and the other sibling does. So what happens? The one sibling just gladly gives it away. The second type of bonding is covalent bonds. It's between two or more nonmetals. Electrons, in this case, are shared. So if we take a look at two chlorine atoms, they both have seven valence electrons. They both need one more valence electron to have a full outer shell. So if they both want a game, what are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna share two together so that they each get one. 
This is much like two siblings who both want to play with a toy, and since they can't both have it, they have to share the toy together. The last bond type would be metallic bonds. These are between atoms of metals, as the name implies, but we're usually talking about the same metal. The valence electrons move freely throughout the continuous array of metal ions. Now the reason why we call them ions is because it's like the metal lost control of its valence electrons. However, overall, the uh, metal sample is neutral. We also call this the C of electrons. So if you take a look at the diagram below, on the left we have a bunch of metal atoms represented by the blue circles and a bunch of their electrons represented by the little red ones. Now this can be thought of as a freeze frame or a screenshot of what this might look like at the atomic level. Now because this isn't in motion, we've got these little red dots representing the electrons and we would say in this shot they're very localized. It means they have a specific location, like your local grocer or your local farmer. Um, on the right side, we have those electrons represented by a cloud, which means that they're moving around and they're free to roam. We still have the same metal atoms where they are, but now electrons can move wherever they like. We call that delocalized. So delocalized means there is no specific location. They're free to roam. So to further our toy analogy, this would be like a bunch of children who have a toy that nobody wants to play with. Right? What? No child wants to play with a Charlie in the box. So in this case, we have a bunch of kids with a bunch of Charlie in the boxes who don't want to play with them. So we can't just put them down or throw them off to the side. They got to go to a different child. So they move around constantly. So this is millions upon millions of these whizzing around. So it kind of looks like a sea of Charlie in the boxes, which is why we call it a sea of electrons. Let's take a look at some examples. You ready, Fu? I am. All right, determine the bond type for each of the following chemical formulas. A, MgCl2. Let's take a look at the elements that are in this compound. Um, how would you classify Mg on the periodic table? Well, looking at my periodic table, the Mg is far to the left, so that makes it a metal, and Cl is on the right of the staircase, making it a non-metal. So I have a metal and a non-metal. All right, so based on those two elements being present, what type of bond should this be? Well, metal and non-metal is pretty much right out of the definition for ionic bond. Good, so we have an ionic bond for MgCl2. Let's take a look at letter B. We've got Mg. How do we classify Mg? We've actually already done that. So that's a metal. So obviously the bonding must be... Metallic. Right, you're going to see the, the metal by itself. And finally C, we have Cl2. It's the same element. How would we classify chlorine? That's a non-metal. All right, so if I have two nonmetals, what should my bond type be? Uh, that's straight out of the definition for covalent. Very good. You try number one. Determine the bond type for each of the following chemical formulas. So bonding that has both ionic and covalent bonds. Some ions contain more than one nonmetal covalently bonded to each other. They are called polyatomic ions. Now, poly is the prefix that means many, so many atoms, polyatomic, contained within the ion, and can be found on table E. If you take a look at the diagram below, you've got some examples of some polyatomic ions. So compounds containing polyatomic ions have both ionic and covalent bonding present. Let's take a look at table E, selected polyatomic ions. Most of the polyatomic ions listed are anions, negative ions, as you can see from the charge listed. If you take a look at the first three on the left, we don't have to deal with these too often. H3O plus hydronium is used in a later unit, acids and bases. Hg2 plus 2 is actually only metals. It doesn't fit our traditional definition of more than one nonmetal being bonded together. The one you do have to worry about that's positive, though, is ammonium, NH4 plus. All right, so we're going to do some more examples here. Shu, are you ready? Yes. All right, so using table E, determine if the bonding in the following compounds is ionic, covalent, or both ionic and covalent. So our first example here is AlCl3. So our first element, Al, what kind of element do we have here? That would be a metal. Good. What about Cl? Definitely a non-metal. So based on those two labels, what kind of bonding do we have here? So metal and non-metal has to be ionic. Perfect. All right, number two, a little different. We've got ALOH3, so let's start with AL again. AL is a metal. Okay, so what do you notice here? Um, for this, O and H are both nonmetals. Okay, so we have two nonmetals there with a metal. 
We're gonna always wanna consult table E when we see three or more total elements in that compound. All right, because of A, L, O, and H, right? Correct. Okay, so if I look at table E, I see OH minus is called hydroxide, so it is a polyatomic ion. I'll label that P. All right, so based on what you have labeled here, what kind of bonding do we have? Well, since I have the polyatomic ion, I should have both ionic and covalent. Good, that polyatomic ion is a dead giveaway that we have both ionic and covalent. Good, letter C here, MnO2. All right, looks like I've got a metal and a non-metal again. Okay, so what kind of bonding? That should be ionic. Good, letter D, HGO. Um, I knew that there was something with HG on table E from what I remember, but this doesn't look like the same one. It's just regular mercury, so metal and non-metal again must be ionic. Good. Okay, letter E. All right, so for this one, I do see that there are three different elements. So Good. like you said earlier, I'm going to go to table E. Let's check it out. And when I take a look at table E... I don't really see anything that looks like it. So All right, so it's, it's good that we checked it. We want to make sure whether it's on there or not. So since it's not, let's just go through and, and figure out what type of elements we have. Well, carbon is a non-metal. H is a non-metal. Oxygen is a non-metal. So they're all non-metals, right? But there's no polyatomic ion, so it should just be covalent. This is just covalent. All non-metals is just covalent. Good. And our last one, F. All right, so for this one, based on what you just said, NH4, NO3, those are on all non-metals, so this should be covalent too. They are all non-metals. However, we are forgetting one thing. What did we do in E before we said, hey, they're all non-metals? Oh, we still saw three or more elements, so we still went to table yes, E. Yes, be careful. Always check table E if you see three or more elements. Okay, um, so this is a good one because I see there's ammonium NH4 plus. So that's a polyatomic. That's a polyatomic. And then I also see NO3 minus nitrate is polyatomic too. So there's actually two polyatomic ions, one positive, one negative. Good, so what type of bonding do we have? So I guess it's gotta be both again. Perfect. All right, you try number two. So using table E, determine if the bonding in the following compounds is ionic, covalent, or both ionic and covalent. That's gonna do it for today's episode on bond types. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by Dunder Mifflin Premium Copy Paper. Get your scrant on. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. Uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. Uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.